These 30 maps of the USA are explaining everything. Let's start with a really captivating one. This map shows the obesity rate in all of the US. But there is a catch. Firstly, darker colors mean a higher percentage of obese adults, which makes Mississippi the worst, with around 15% of the obese population. It's not that much, right? Well, this map is from 1990. If we move forward to the year 2009, this is what the map looks like. The darkest hues now signify a staggering 30 to 35 percent obesity rate. Colorado is the last state that is at the same level as the Mississippi was just 19 years ago. Fast forward to today. West Virginia, Oklahoma and Louisiana are the most obese states, with an astonishing 40 to 45 percent of their population battling obesity. The next map shows how dangerous obesity could be. This is the average life expectancy in each state. Here, darker shades indicate a longer lifespan. Hawaii takes the lead with an impressive average age of 81 years. Contrastingly, Mississippi trails behind, boasting an average age of 72 years, a notable 9-year gap from the Hawaiian paradise. States like West Virginia, Louisiana, Alabama and more feature among the lowest life expectancies. I must say there is some correlation with the obesity map. As we know, the US could be a truly dangerous place. These are the most safest and dangerous states in the US. More blue on the map means safer, while red signals danger. The most dangerous state in all of the US is New Mexico. But what could be more shocking is that second comes Alaska, with an extraordinarily high crime rate. On the flip side, New Hampshire is hailed as the safest state, followed by Maine, New Jersey, Connecticut and Vermont. Now, this one could surprise you. This map reveals the most common ancestors of people in each state. At first sight, it might seem like a miracle that German isn't a prevalent language in the USA. Meanwhile, the South inherited a lot of genes from Mexico due to its proximity and the fact that this part of the country used to be Mexican territory. Only three states have English ancestry as the majority. Then there are a few Irish, some Italians, Japanese in Hawaii, quite a lot of Americans and even more African Americans, basically in all of the Southeast. But remember, we are talking about ancestors here. Today, the situation has radically changed and new immigrants are coming from totally different countries. Each flag represents the most common country of birth for foreign-born residents, excluding Mexico. Well, now we can see that instead of Germans, the states are dominated by Indians, which leads in total of 22 states. Some of the other prevalent nations are Filipinos in the West and Canadians in the North. But what about the native population that once occupied this big land? Well, unfortunately their numbers have significantly decreased. Today the Native Americans live only in small areas, making less than 1% of the entire American population. Alaska has the highest percentage, with about 20%, while Vermont, New Hampshire and Hawaii have the lowest rates with less than 0.7%. Let's talk about the money. The USA remains the world's leading economy. But does that mean that everyone makes good money? Not quite. This is the minimum wage in each state. And as you can see, the American dream is not the same everywhere. The best place to start seems to be Washington, where you would get a minimum of $16.28. Meanwhile, 20 states keep the federal minimum wage of only $7.25, which is more than two times less. That's crazy. But $10 isn't the same everywhere. Consider this map showing the salary needed to afford an average home. Darker red means a higher salary is required. Even though you earn double in Washington, you will likely spend double on more or less similar house. Hawaii takes the crown for the most expensive, 
requiring around $150,000 in salary for an average home. Now the best place to live seems to be West Virginia, with only $38,000 in salary needed to afford a house. This calculation is based on a 30-year mortgage with a 10% down payment. This time, let's wipe every state of the map. Do you know which of them was the first one? A hint is that it was somewhere in this area. The first state ever was Delaware, established in 1787. He was quickly followed by Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Next year, another eight states joined. Since then, each state has gradually become part of the USA. Hawaii was the last state to become part of the US in August 1959, completing the list of the 50 United States we know today. Nevertheless, did you know that these are not the only territories under the control of the USA? The one you probably know about is Puerto Rico, which is not an official state, but an unincorporated territory with Commonwealth status. And there are even more of them. They have different official statuses, but all of them are under the control of the US. Five of these are inhabited, while the rest are nine uninhabited islands, atolls and reefs. They are used mainly for scientific or military purposes. Now, when we have established all 50 states, can you actually remember them? This map shows how well each state is remembered. More orange signifies being more forgotten. Among the most popular states are California, Nevada, Washington, Texas, Florida and New York. Meanwhile, easily forgotten states include Maryland, Iowa or Indiana. Which state stands out as the most memorable or forgettable for you? Well, in order to know and remember a lot of things, such as names of the states, you need to be literate. What you can see now are states differentiated by their average English literacy. As the worst of all comes California, with only 76.9% of the population being literate. This means that one in five people there may struggle with reading or writing in English. Right behind California comes New York, Florida and Texas. Meanwhile, state that deserves praise for 94% of the literate population is Minnesota. Above the 90% level are most of the northern states. The next one quite correlates with the literacy rate. This map shows the number of adults who were incarcerated. I mean Louisiana and Mississippi, what is happening there? They are the worst states by far, with approximately 1.1% of the adult population in jails or state prisons. Most of the southern states are leading in this metric, which is not particularly the best achievement. Point for Massachusetts, as there the number of adults in jail and state prisons is four times smaller than in Louisiana. Good job, guys! Assuming you are not in prison and that you are literate, then you should be making money for your family. This one depicts the median income for an average household in each state. Darker blue means higher income, with California, Maryland, New Jersey and Massachusetts in the top places earning on average more than $80,000 a year. However, some states earn two to three times less than that. Arkansas, Mississippi and West Virginia are among them. We've discovered that the more you earn, the more you spend. This is the same metric as the previous one, however, adjusted for the cost of living. This changes the situation. For example, California, Hawaii or New York now doesn't seem like the best places to live. Minnesota as the only state hasn't changed at all, meaning you can still make good money there without spending it all. Meanwhile, in states like Florida, Mississippi, New Mexico or West Virginia, you are not only earning little in comparison with other states, but the cost of living is ripping you off any excess money you have. Now, pay attention as this one is crazy. When you see it on the map, you are probably aware of the fact that many people live on the coast, but the extent of it might be surprising. 
Both areas on the map have the same population, even though one is about four times larger. Fun fact is that about half of the population in the US lives within 30 miles of the coast. We can also totally change the view. If we divide the US into four quarters like this, each one holds roughly the same population. This highlights a significant imbalance between different regions. The next map depicting the fascinating topic of population is this one. Well, what you actually see is LA County with almost 10 million people living within this area. When you put this into a broader perspective, we can say that each of the following states has a lower population than the little county part of Los Angeles. When talking about population density, why not take a look at who actually these people are? These are the biggest minorities in each state. At first sight, it's visible that Hispanics dominate the West, South and Central America. Now they are even forming the majority ethnic in California and New Mexico, making white people a minority. The largest minority in the East and Southeast are people of dark color, leading in total of 22 states. Meanwhile, the Native Americans are the second largest group only in four states. Hawaii, Maine and Vermont are predominantly populated by individuals of mixed ethnicity. Living in America could be dangerous. Unfortunately, crimes and murders happen every day. The following visualization shows the rate of homicides per 100,000 people in each state. New Mexico, Louisiana and Mississippi rank as the top three most dangerous states. However, there is still hope, as some places have rates 10 times smaller than the worst cases. Among those are Idaho, Utah, Nebraska, Iowa and Maine with the lowest rate of them all. Only 1.7 homicides per 100,000 people take place there. Yet homicide is not the only danger that lurks outside. Many people willingly put their lives at the risk daily when starting their car engines. Road fatalities are sadly part of the convenient transporting. Nevertheless, it's interesting that some states tend to have even three times more car accidents than others. Whether it's due to driving habits or road conditions, data indicate that most road fatalities happen in South Carolina, as right behind it are Mississippi and New Mexico. Honestly, no hate, but what is happening in Mississippi? The winners of this category are Massachusetts, Vermont and Minnesota. Okay, I swear it wasn't my intention to speak badly about Mississippi and I hope they will succeed in the following category, but they are at the lowest rank one more time. These are states ranked by their credit scores. Massachusetts, Vermont, Minnesota and New Hampshire take the lead once again. So far, these seem like decent places for life. Overall, North seems to handle their finances better than the South. I guess the long winters have an impact on that. We have learned that LA County is large, but Los Angeles itself is not the biggest city out there. Do you know which one is it? Well, if you have never heard about any city in the US, I bet you have heard about this one. It's called New York and is located right here, as well as its almost 9 million population. In comparison, LA City is second with only 4 million. The rest of the top 10 largest cities in the US are Chicago, Houston, Phoenix, Philadelphia, San Antonio, never heard of that one, San Diego, Dallas and San Jose. California takes the spotlight again in the following map, which ranks states by their GDP. It's unimaginable how large is the economy of California. Its nominal GDP sits at 3.6 trillion USD. This surpasses the GDP of all countries in the world, except for China, Japan, Germany and the US itself. It's even 1.3 trillion ahead of second place Texas. New York State comes in third place with an admirable 2 trillion dollars. On the other end, the smallest economies are found in Alaska, Wyoming and Vermont with Vermont being the smallest of them all with 43 billion dollars. 
that is 90 times less than California. Despite this, Vermont's economy is still larger than that of more than 97 countries worldwide. We have talked about the most common country of birth of immigrants in the US. But do you have any idea how many of them are there? These are the shares of the population born outside of the US. California, New York and Florida are the most popular destinations. Meanwhile, nobody wants to start a new life in Montana, West Virginia or Mississippi. Which is not a surprise for me after this video. When you have a diverse population from different parts of the world, language can be a barrier. Excluding English and Spanish, these would be the most commonly spoken languages in each state. Do you speak any other language besides these two? If you are from the US, chances are you speak German, French or Vietnamese, as these are the most commonly found. Among the less widespread ones are Tagalog, Russian, the native languages of Navajo, Yupik, Dakota or Hmong, Polish, Arabian, Korean, Italian or Chinese. Going back to the old days, when Europeans arrived and established settlements. These are the oldest cities in all of the US. The oldest of them all was found in Florida in 1565 by a Spanish admiral, who named it San Agustin. Most of the oldest towns were situated on the east coast, as that was the site from which the Europeans came. But that wasn't a rule, as the third oldest city is located in New Mexico. I got the last map here, but this could be truly the deciding one for you. This map shows all states with Springfield on their land, while the darker ones have even more of them. And that's amazing. Well, I hope you have learned something new in this video. Write me your opinion in the comments below and I'm looking forward to see you in the next one.